Happy Sunday! We're rocking it out because apparently, according to the oracle of of the housing crash, <laughs> Bloomberg named her that. She says that uh, young men are going to be causing the housing crash. And I did never said this. This is the article that came out. And I have to ask your opinion about it because uh, you'll you'll get mine as we go along because uh, I don't know. Let, let's get into the article. Let's just jump into it. I hope everybody's doing OK. I see. Uh, I see you guys have jumped in. Uh, hi, Debbie. Hi, Crow Homestead. Hi, Ivan. Good to see you guys. <laughs> This is for me, of course. Oh, I like that that name. <laughs> yeah, metal. <laughs> okay, this is not from Fortune magazine. They kind of ripped it off from another magazine. And that, if you ever want to see a, an article about real estate that happens to be a behind, behind a paywall, just copy and paste the article headline and put it into Google search. And then it will show you that it's always on Yahoo News. They just take uh, articles that were on a paywall and put it in Yahoo Finance. So just saving you a few bucks if you were thinking about it. Okay. So Fortune says the uh, growing crisis of young American male could send home prices falling for years, even decades, says the Oracle of Wall Street. All right. <laughs> Her name is Meredith Whitney, deemed the Oracle of, of Wall Street, right? She, they say that she accurately predicted the housing crash of 08. But here's the thing. I actually, because I've seen this several times, the Oracle of Wall Street. Bloomberg named her that. And she worked for a bank at the time and she gave some predictions. But that was after about 15 other economists had said that mortgage backed securities were in big trouble. And so I think she worked for Citicorp. Eddie, you can pull that up. It's on Wikipedia. But anyways, we'll go. We'll look at that at Wik on Wikipedia in a minute. Anyways, so I don't know if like I wouldn't necessarily say the oracle. She just happened to read other guy, other people's predictions, and she kind of sprinkled that in there. I mean, I'm not degrading her ability as an economist or a, a expert. What I'm saying is that I think it's a, a stretch to call her the oracle of Wall Street when when other uh, predictors were out there. Anyways, this is what she's quoted as saying. You have men staying single longer and that have what I call a growing crisis of young males that are twice as likely to live at home than women. So out of five young men living at home with their parents, these are not young men that are going to go to college and coming from home, coming home for the holidays. These are young grown men choosing to live at home. Okay, go ahead and scroll down. <laughs> All right, pass, 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 pass. Um, so here, this is what she says afterwards. I think you're going to start seeing housing prices begin a multi-year decade decline just due to supply and demand issues. She also went on to say, so you have the demand supply imbalance, more demand, less supply right now. And I think it's going to invert. So what that means is supply is going to outweigh demand, which is why she sees home prices falling for years. Whitney's taking a base part in on demographic shifts. The bulk of the housing is owned by people and households that are over the age of 40. But household formations are the lowest they've been in more than a century, which tra translates to in-demand problem, she said today. I... I have to throw my two cents in right now. She has not put in perspective the amount of first time homes that are being bought out by corporations. To me, this reads so terribly. And I don't like, she's so t out of touch with humanity to know what's actually going on in the housing market. I, like I said, I don't have the older degrees behind me. I was never deemed the Oracle of, of the wall street, but, uh, Anyways, it says, yet many experts have predicted that home prices will continue to go up from here. Mortgage rates reached a two-decade high, two high last year, and people were buying houses. And because there were simply not enough homes, demand outweighed supply, keeping home prices high. Whitney, however, is calling for uh, a differently as it shifts within the housing world. And apparently, a young men, male adults uh, occur. It is not clear what the data she is referring to here or the information above. <laughs> 
Whitney argued that lower than uh, ever interest rates ballooned inflation, and particularly in the housing sector. With prices so many or people are priced out, if you're single, the chances of you're going to be able to afford a home on your own is less likely than if you had a dual income. Then she goes on to state that homeowners hold more wealth than non-homeowners. Um, well, Whitney also long discussed the silver tsunami set to strike the housing baby boomers and their homes will be freed up, which we all know has never happened. You'll see a supply and demand dynamic shift. The founder of the CEO of Whitney Advisor Group previously said echoes her claims today. If you, if, I've talked about the silver tsunami for quite some time. I mean, probably since I started this channel back in 2017. And they were predicting that baby boomers, as they started aging out and getting into retirement years, they would sell their their family homes and like move to Florida. And and they, you know, the, like we would have all these smaller homes that would be available for younger generations. Um, well, what they're finding out now, that's not the case. Most a good portion of baby boomers, especially uh, their uh, lower middle class, middle class, lower middle class, are deciding to actually just stay age in place in their homes. They're not freeing up the housing market. The other thing, too, is that uh, a lot of baby boomers are like, well, no, I'm going to keep my family home and buy another one. Those are the ones that are on the upper middle class and uh, uh, upper classes that are buying not one, not two, sometimes three homes. So uh her prediction when it comes to housing maybe she should stick to the wall, wall street i like i'm being ugly i shouldn't say that but <laughs> to me i don't she's not out here like looking at housing every single day she looks at securities she looks at the bonds market she's looking at wall street and it's a completely different thing but if she's fate to me in my opinion if she's looking at wall street she knows that companies that like the big ones like Tricon that was just bought out by Blackstone are buying up as many single families as properties as they can. Tricon was a company for a very short period of time that bought the most homes throughout the Sunbelt area. They have over before they were bought out by Blackstone, they had over 39,000 homes that they purchased during the pandemic. 39,000 homes throughout the inside the Sunbelt, all smaller homes that they could turn into rental properties. Yeah, I don't see that men, young men, not being able to be af able to afford a home that will cause home prices to decline. And if you look at the statistics, more women own homes than men. Um, so I don't, I don't know where I don't see where she's coming from. But maybe I'm wrong. I want to, I want to hear your opinion in the uh, comment section because I thought when I read this article, I'm like, is this lady? <laughs> like, what is she talking about? <laughs> Yeah, I thought most single home buyers were women. That is true. That is true. Uh, women will buy a house without a man. That, this is true as well. Um, statistically, more women own homes than men. Single women own homes than men. Um, I saw that in a, a comment section that um, when somebody posted that, a lot of dudes or a lot of people were really upset. And they were like, oh, that's because she got the home due, due to divorce. But you have to remember, like a lot of single women were never been married before and they are purchasing homes on their own. It's important to a lot of women to own real estate um, much more than it is for younger men. I'm not saying that as conjecture or just I just know that from statistics. <laughs> uh, sorry, Christine, it won't be the guys. It will be the ladies like my daughter uh, under 40 who like doesn't want to invest in buildings too long to recap reward. Um, well, it could, it could be. I mean, it could be. But statistically, currently, more women own homes than men. 2000, 2004 derivatives were a major reason for the 2007-2008 crash. Saw that coming? <laughs> well, she worked for like, oh, Eddie, if you pull out that Wikipedia thing, um, I think she worked for Citicorp. I, I was reading all about her because I was like, who deemed her the Oracle real estate? I wanted to know if she named herself that. She did not. It was Bloomberg. Um, she was, uh, is it Citicorp that she worked for? Anyway, she she gave a really um, bad, uh, like, she did an analysis that people that rocked the financial world saying that she didn't think that uh, mortgages were going to be doing really well. And it was bad for bad uh, securities. So here it is. Uh, Whitney issued a particularly pessimistic but accurate research report on Citigroup on October 2007, 
which many Wall Street analysts and news media paid attention. She noted that the bank's dividends paid out to investors were greater than the profits at that time and made the case that the world would lead to bankruptcy. But then she also like gave this other um, statistic, like they were going to lose like $100 billion, but it wasn't even anywhere close to that. So um, anyways, anyways, Oracle of Oracle of Wall Street. <laughs> there were other like like I said I I even like I googled it then I looked up who predicted what at what time and there like I said there were some bigger names out there that predicted that b far before she did. <laughs> she is smoking in the shower the article will not age well. You know what it'd be interesting to see what happens in the future. I just was so annoyed by the article altogether. Um, I think she's looking at younger people as like, they're like, oh, woe is me. I'm not going to do anything. A lot of people want to buy a house. And if they have the ability to buy a home, they're going to take it. And a lot of younger people are so willing to invest in real estate, they'll cash out their 401ks. It happened here. Like it happened with me. <laughs> I saw a girl and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe she's doing that. She cashed out her 401k to buy a house. Ended up being a wise decision for her. So we'll see, you know. Why not just keep playing video games in the basement? <laughs> what does society offer? You know what? The mi ministers asked that question. So I will say there is a growing amount of younger people that feel um, the world is jaded, you know? And uh, I can honestly say that when I graduated high school, it doesn't feel anything like it does when my daughter graduated high school. I have another daughter graduating this year. Um but I also know that whenever society says one thing, you always do the opposite. I tell my kids this. So when society is telling them, don't go to college, it's not worth it. It's not worth the paper that it's written on. You go to college because in about five more years, they're going to say, we have record number of working people that don't have a college degree and we can't get them in the good paying jobs. You know, so you just do the opposite. Um, everything is always... Uh, crafted in a way to make things look different five years down the road. So you have to be doing the opposite of what they say. That's what I, that's what I tell my kids. <laughs> uh, S. Stewart says single has nothing to do with being, uh, being male or female. It sounds like, uh, sounds of this article are the young basement dwelling makes you just inherit, uh, inherit their parents' houses in their demise. Um, you know, I could, uh, that could be for some people, you know, um, but you have to count on the fact that your parents are going to give you that house. And if you've shown no initiative to uh, take care of yourself and you're going to live in your parents' basement, mom and dad might not leave you that house. That's not a really good business plan. <laughs> or is she watching content pushed out the, by the Crash Bros? Um, I don't know if the Crash Bros, I don't watch that kind of content, so I don't know. Um, and, uh, the article to me read like she's completely out of touch. Hey, Clark, the realtor. Thank you so much for coming on a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I appreciate you. Uh, but Mr. Byron said, question and comment. Interest rates to me are very low. I compare this with interest rates in the 70s and 80s. Is there a bit of misinformation these days or is there too many uh, just waiting, just writing only? Okay, so I, I see what you're saying, but the feeling is, so if you were a uh, millennial and you were thinking about buying a house, um, uh, before the pandemic, you're probably like, Oh, I'm going to build up my nest egg and I'm going to go ahead and purchase a house and interest rates are really low. Then the pandemic happens. Interest rates get extremely low. All your friends are buying houses. You're like, okay, but you're having a hard time finding a house. Then the pandemic's over interest rates increase. So now your payment is so incredibly high. If you, even if you were to buy a house in your friend's neighborhood that didn't go up $100,000 in the last two years, uh, you wouldn't be able to afford that house because the interest rates are what determines the payment. And that's why most people are payment driven. They're not necessarily um, house driven as much as they are payment driven. They're like, okay, this house is good, but it, and it fits my budget for my payment. Um, it can get people in a lot of hot water too, when you, when you, uh, account for that too. Um, just a word of warning, if you're thinking about this, uh, mortgage payments, even though it's a fixed rate, and I know many in the chat know this, that doesn't mean that your mortgage payment will always be $800. Because if you're escrowing your, uh, taxes and your insurance, those can go up. 
Um, I, I watched a young girl who bought a brand new house and her, she bought this brand new house and the first year's taxes were escrowed and so were her insurance payments. Well, the, because it was a brand new house, the first year's taxes were only for the land. So the following year was for the dwelling and the land. So her payment went up quite a bit. Not only that, everybody knows, we've talked about it here on this live stream, insurance rates have gone up quite a bit too. So her insurance went from $1,000 to $1,700. And then her taxes went up. So that added on an additional $375 to her payment, which she was not expecting at all. And now she's being forced to sell. She says, I can't afford that. Um, to a lot of people, $375 doesn't seem like a lot. But with the cost of living right now, um, groceries, just normal wear and tear of, of life right now to replace a tire. It's just a lot for some people. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens down the road because inflation has not been under control. Um, we are paying so much more for everything. I wonder how many people are underwater because we're actually borrowing more on credit cards than we ever have. Um, I'm not saying a housing crash can't, won't, or won't happen ever. I'm just saying currently the way that the housing market looks today. It doesn't look like there's any indicators, in my opinion, that we will see a massive housing crash this year. Um, I, I mean, anything could change at any time, though. My crystal ball says that's what I'm, I'm predicting at this moment. But tomorrow, that could all change. Because if there's any kind of economic downturn that happens in another sector, that always can affect housing. So... I, I hate to give like a, a time limit and like, I don't know how many people uh, made videos like housing crash, 2022, housing crash, 2023, the housing crash, 2024. Um, and uh, I know that people watch those videos because they're so hopeful to find an affordable house. I want you to find an affordable house. So overjoyed says late blue, uh, I almost said bloomer, <laughs> a late boomer here had my parents bought uh, this condo in the 70s, I may never have been able to afford a home. Sadly, I sold my house after the divorce. I wish I kept the house and sold the condo. Yeah, I, I get that. But, the, you know, we make decisions and condos are easier to maintain. You don't have to worry about the yard. And um, I can see why you probably wanted to keep the condo and, and sell the house. Houses are a lot to maintain. Uh, you got the grass to worry about every single week. You got things that always pop up. Uh, it's expensive to fi uh, fix the HVAC and have it maintained every week. Your water heater. Do I don't know how many people don't know this. Do you know you're supposed to have your hot water heater serviced every single year? Every single year. Even if it's a um, tankless water heater. I did not know that. <laughs> I thought with, with this tankless, I'm like, oh, it just goes through the little thing. It doesn't need to be serviced. I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. <laughs> very, very wrong. So, um, you know, I, I get why you would want to keep in a condo. But and I can understand why you would have regret years later when you saw the housing market plop, poop, like just explode. <laughs> it was like a, a nuclear explosion of, of uh, equity increase. It's crazy. Lawnmower says, I have a friend in the University Park, Texas. She lived in the same house for most of her life. She never lived further than four to five miles from it. That's very common. Like here where I live, it like there, I'm not joking. There are subdivisions with family number, members' names on it, and everybody in the subdivision is related to that family in some way, shape, or form. I love my family very much, but I can't imagine being that close to proximity to them always. Um, and they probably imagine, can't imagine the same of me either. I'm pretty annoying. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I always have to get out. I'm always one to travel though. I want, I'm like right now I'm even itchy. I want to, I want to go to another state. I'm just waiting for my kids to get out of college. And then I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm heading out. I'm dipping. <laughs> Lily said, who was buying up the homes? Is it a fun group? Okay. So uh, there's a lot of different companies, five companies. And uh, this is, I did this in a video recently, actually five companies own 8,000 uh, Kansas city area homes, creating an intense com competition for residents. So um, there's a lot of these, um, private equity firms. Some people will say they're hedge funds, but honestly, it's the private equity firms that are buying up these uh, single family homes. And what they do is they try to buy up a specific area um, within a, like a 10 or 20 mile radius. 
So that way they can dictate how much rent is in that area and they can dictate how much home prices can be, uh, you know, sold for or purchased for. They, they do it intentionally because they want to control that market in that, that area. So I, in my video, I talked about Vinebrook. Vinebrook is going to the smaller cities. Um, they're, they're huge. And um, one of the, like they're like in smaller cities you wouldn't even think of. Uh, Blackstone is probably, look, it's lowest on the list, but Vinebrook is the newest one that's scooping up as many homes as they can. And according to the residents that are living in Vinebrook homes, they don't have a lot of glowing uh, reviews for the company itself. They say they do some deceptive practices when it comes to their lease agreements. Um, and we're going to see more of that. I mean, corporations, as you know, uh, their bottom line is money. And when it comes to trying to do the right thing by people, they're not going to. They're just going to go, well, you can just pack up and move out if you're not going to abide by our rules. And they will find ways um, with their lease agreements to get them out and get them out fast. Um, just be very careful if you're going to sign a lease with any major corporation that you actually read the whole entire lease, see how you are protected. If you're concerned about that, you can go into a title office and ask to speak to one of the title attorneys there. I'm sure they would go over it with you really quick. Most people are pretty nice at the title offices and they know at some point you're probably going to purchase a house. So it behooves them to, to be kind to you when you uh, go in there and just ask them to review your, your lease agreement from this big corporation that, you know, if, if you were to get in trouble or what are the, the, the stipulations, what are the hidden things in this contract that you need to be aware of? Um, yeah. Yep. So uh, bliss, bliss. Uh, uh, the housing crash will crash from old men in Washington. One woman at the Federal Reserve and an old man at the Federal Reserve. Well, <laughs> I just watched a whole documentary, actually two of them, about what happened during the opio opioid crisis. I'm going to say this word right, opioid crisis. And um, men with lots of power and money get a very small, and then things are brushed under the carpet and Washington does not protect people that have been damaged. It is very apparent. And at some point, somebody's going to get caught doing what they're doing. And there's going to, we're going to have a documentary just like we had for the opioid crisis and the housing crash that happened in 08. It's going to have another documentary about what's happened now. And we're all going to be sitting there going, why didn't anybody do anything? That's going to happen. We're, we're, we're going to, there's going to be neighborhoods that are completely taken over by specific corporations, specific uh hedge, not hedge funds, but uh, private equity firms that are going to dictate market price. It's going to get to a point where it's just absolutely ridiculous. And then finally, once enough people have been damaged or hurt by it, then, then they'll pile up enough evidence. We'll have a bunch of hearings about it. These companies will get a little slap on the wrist and we'll have another documentary, you know, starring who knows who, you know, like, uh, rich people get away with a lot of things. I'm not talking like, I'm talking the uber rich, not not people that have worked their tails off. I'm talking about the people that have schemed to to rake people over the coals. I'm trying to be careful with my wording. If anybody knows me in real life knows that I have a real potty mouth, so I have to be very careful on live streams. Peter says, you hit the nail on the head. The people who write the stuff like this are totally removed from the ordinary people. And they live in a land of make-believe. They live in a land of make-believe and they look at the regular people on how can we control how they spend their money? How can we take more money from them? They don't care about the repercussions of that, right? It's all about um, satisfying a boardroom of investors, making the you know the investors happy all the time. If like if look at all the CEOs of the major com companies that have made record profits off of us, and a lot of it is just greedflation. There, it wasn't true inflation. They use that as an excuse to make sure that we paid more and they're still doing it. They don't care. They, they just don't care because it makes them more money. 
you know, hit the like button or YouTube will <laughs> add more commercials and start calling you about your car's insurance warranties. Yeah, <laughs> your car insurance warranties. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, don't do them. That's for sure. I can't say that on live, but everybody can read. <laughs> everybody can read. Hey, if you guys like my cup, I'll let you know there's an affiliate link in the description. You can go to Amazon, just click on it, and you can get one of these cups yourself. Apparently, you get two. I didn't know that when I uh, connected that uh, affiliate link. It actually is for two cups, not one. Name block said, so, uh, so these young men should be in debt uh, and debt themselves for the life to please some Wall Street clowns and economics <laughs> economists. Oh, right. so here's the thing. It's a narrative that is being created that we have to worry about young men not wanting to purchase real estate. I think it's a deflection of the fact that Wall Street is buying so many houses. If I'm going to put my conspiracy th hat on, they're trying to deflect from the fact that Wall Street loves buying single family homes and renting them out. And it makes them a lot of cash, a lot of cash. And so um, that's what I think it really is. They're saying, oh, these poor men, these young guys are never going to be able to get a house, you know, because they're just trapped in their parents' basement and everything. Then why don't you pay them more so they can afford to buy a house, Meredith? <laughs> you know? Like, uh, you know, the... Average American median income is not meeting up with inflation costs. And a lot of people are struggling right now. So I think that that, that trying to spin a different narrative when it comes to housing makes Wall Street look better-ish, I guess, is what I think. That's my conspiracy hat theory. I got a bunch of them. I, I, Wall Street is never trying to do the best for humanity. That's for sure. They're just trying to make the best buck. <laughs> they can they can i mean our food costs are so crazy i walked out of the grocery store i was so mad i like 43 bucks and i it was two small bags 43 dollars. i had like gotten a pound of ground beef and like I, it was barely anything baking soda <laughs> like a big box of baking soda so dumb like even that was another thing a bo big box of baking soda like i remember it being like five bucks this is $11. So insane. We need more trades in healthcare professionals. Yeah. But, but, you know, the thing is, is that private equity has taken over healthcare too. So they are not unwilling to pay as much as they used to pay nurses. Like they would adjust for inflation and they've overworked them. And because they don't want to pay them, they're making them take on more patients. Private equity does not do the best for humanity. It was uh, pitched to us as society that that private firms could, you know, fix government problems. They did it with the prison systems. They've done it with housing. They're doing it with uh, uh, health care. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Love the glasses. Oh, thank you. I can't read. Like, I can't. I can't see this without them. Um, I turned 50 and all of a sudden I can't see anything. I was kind of doing this for a couple of years, not gonna lie, doing this thing, you know, <laughs> and my kids said something and then I was at a restaurant and my brother said, Hey, you want to use my glasses? No, no, I'm fine. He's like, just try them. I put them on. I'm like, it's a whole new world. <laughs> I can see everything on the menu. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, I hated the fact that I had to wear glasses again because I got that LASIK years ago and I was like, I can see everything. Everything looks great until I got, you know, to that age. <laughs> Do you think that people who purchased homes in 2021 and 2022 are going to be lose money if they sell when the prices eventually readjust? Um, it will depend on how much they purchased it for. If, if home prices readjust, how low will it go? I mean, let me just put it to you this way. In 2008, my husband and I sold, it was 2007, we sold our house in Orlando. The guy bought it for $230. Um, the lowest it went was $183. But he ended up, he waited, you know, he waited out 10 years later. He made 200, he sold it for $250,000. That house right now is at $425,000. 
I tell people, if you don't plan on living in a house for a long period of time, don't buy a house. Like you, if you're thinking that you're going to move within three years, please don't purchase a house. Just don't. Um, it doesn't make financial se uh, sense. Um, a house is a long time haul purchase. And to get the best reap on your investment, you hold on to it as long as you can when it comes to a home. Um, I don't know if a lot of uh, people are going to lose their equity in their house if they bought it in 2019, 2021, because what they really have is something called, they call it the golden handcuffs, because they have an interest rate that is so incredibly low. So let's just say they lost you know, $50,000 in equity. Um, and they were going to buy their next house, uh, if the interest rates were where they're at now, even if they were to buy a less expensive home, they would be spending more on their payment because of the interest rates. So um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think they're going to lose as much as people are hoping that they will. Um, I just don't see it that way. Which area, which state area would you want to move to? Um, I am, I am an open book. <laughs> we, uh, we've looked at a bunch of different areas. I am kind of tired of heat. I am very heat sensitive and I've lived in the South now since I was 13 years old. So I'd like to go to an area that has more seasons. Um, like I want a true fall. I want a, I want a real winter where I see snow at Christmas time, you know, <laughs> like I want, I want that kind of thing. Uh, I grew up as a kid until I was 13 in Massachusetts and, um, I don't, I can't afford to go there. I'm not going to go back to Massachusetts, but I, I long for cold weather <laughs> again. Yep. It is a monopoly. And that's, you know what, do you guys remember the movie Wally? -E? So Wally -E was basically run by this one specific company and they ended up owning everything and they were delivering stuff to everybody. And when you watch that movie, you're like, Oh, this is about Amazon. Well, even, even Jeff Bezos right now is buying up homes and, and renting them out. He's even doing this. And it's, it's only going to be a matter of time that they start, you know, taking over and dominating a market. Um, they do it with everything else. So can you imagine you're, you're putting out your rent payment to Amazon? You Can you get prime membership with that? You know, if you sign a lease with Amazon, um, it's, it's even with Blackstone and BlackRock, they're the same company. They were split and you don't think they sit in boardrooms and have conversations at lunchtime, how they can do us over one more time. I mean, come on. These, these guys, they're, they're sitting at a completely different le level, you know, while they're playing golf. It's crazy. Creative Fugal Fun says, question, have we decided there is going to be a housing crash? Um, well, some predictors will say that um, because of the lack of supply of homes, uh, that they don't see home prices crashing. They may level off. Um, and like home builders aren't building either because it's too expensive to build right now. And there isn't enough buyers willing to pay that interest rate. So home building has paused once again. Um, but currently they're saying the Oracle of <laughs> Wall Street, Meredith, I think her name is Meredith Whitney, said that young men are going to cause the housing crash because they're not going to be able to afford the home and it's going to cause a decline in home prices. So uh, is there any, uh, the big short, any recommendations on the 2008 issues? The big short, that was close. Yep. There it is. The big short. There's a bunch of them. That was a good movie. It was, I mean, it's, you know, of course. Yeah. That one from the, you're correct right there. 60 minutes. Look at Eddie's so good. And you know what I want to do? I want everybody in the chat to wish the producer, Mr. Eddie, <laughs> A very happy birthday. He had a birthday this weekend. Yay! Happy birthday, Eddie. <laughs> so, there you go. Wish Eddie a happy birthday. That'd be great. There, uh, that, where did that article come from? So she creative frugal can um look that up. But I loved the big short. It was pretty clear what they did. And if you want to watch that, and then then I want you to watch the video, uh, the movie about um the opioid crisis. Uh, what was that called, Eddie? If you could put it in the chat, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. So, and then compare the two 
on how uh, the government handled the situation and how the the biggest players just got a slap on the wrist and how they pretty much mirror each other. And every time that these big companies get way over their head, they're making so much money. They're just swimming in cash, you know, and then they build a case against them. It's literally a mirror of each other on how it's all handled. It's bizarre. It's so bizarre. Yeah. Yep. That's what I would recommend, my friend. That's what I totally recommend. I think it was called um, Painkiller or something. What was that called? It was a good movie. Yeah. Painkiller. That was it. it was a, it's a, a limited series, Painkiller. It was good. It was on Netflix. It, um, it has uh, um, Matthew Broderick from uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off in it. <laughs> that's him yeah it's it's weird to see your childhood crushes grow up you're like that doesn't look like the Matthew project I remember in my brain <laughs> we all get old don't we we all get old yep if you have any questions just go ahead and put them in the chat and I will answer them as they come along Crow Homestead said West Virginia residents are still 80 percent on op opioids both legal and illegal and yeah it's crazy it's really crazy Karen has a question. I'm almost 69 years old and I have been looking to buy a mobile home in a park, but they are wanting 250,000. Any suggestions from someone with a great deal of, uh, without a great deal of money, hate apartments. Um, Karen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go look in your area. If there's any manufactured homes that are sitting on its own lot where you don't have to live in a park, there's going to be two reasons for that. So we, you know, we've been talking about private equity firms, uh, in this, uh, live stream quite a bit. So private equity firms, favorite investment is in mobile home parks. And that's because they get the best return on investment. The homeowners maintain the manufactured home that they purchased themselves. And all they do is rent the land underneath it. What private equity does is they increase the rent so exorbitantly high that it forces the residents out of their home and they know they won't take the house with them. So they either a like renovate it and either rent it out or they resell it. So now they made money on a house they never purchased in the first place or they're renting it out, making money on a house they never purchased in the first place because they know that most people are, aren't going to be able to move that manufactured home because it is tens of thousand dollars to to move it. And they love it. They love to just jack up the rents as much as possible. One other reason why they do it too, is if the land is really good and in a high, high air, uh, high, uh, traffic area, they will raise the rent so incredibly high to the point where they, uh, will get all the residents out and then they'll level out the lot and then resell it, uh, again, cause then it's free land. Basically they got it for a deal and they're able to upsell that, that piece of property. Cause it's got all the utilities and, and our infrastructure already there. So yeah, they're, they're not the good guys. Um, if you do happen to find a mobile home park that you do like, I would look at something called a co-op mobile home park. And that is because the residents run the whole entire park. You don't have a private equity firm that's running it. And so your uh, payments when it comes to rent is leveled out because all the residents in there are, are voting on it. So if there's like a ta property tax increase for that area or anything else, that will be adjusted for your uh, payments. But uh, everything is voted on and every resident has a say in it. But if it's owned by a corporation, that's not going to happen. So... Emma with Urban Van Life says, happy birthday, Mr. Eddie. Now start looking for houses in Liverpool. Well, I, you know, England has the same issue as we do here in the United States with private equity. Yep. Look at all those people wishing Eddie a happy birthday. So good. <laughs> I made him a really good dinner too. Yeah. Um, the, so uh, like I was going to tell you about the, the uh, manufactured homes. I want you to look on hudhomestore.org uh, to find some, um, some properties because you can find foreclosed manufactured homes that are attached to land on HUD and you can get yourself a heck of a deal. Um, they have a lot of foreclosed properties that are manufactured homes too. Um, the good part about that is a lot of investors don't want to buy ones that are on individual lots. They're like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. That's just not going to be the money maker for rent. Um, so you're going to have better luck with that. Just give you a little heads up. 
here in Asheville, we have a winter. We don't see, we didn't have snow this year. Highlands, North Carolina is the best place to live. Happy birthday, Eddie. Oh, you know what? Um, I used to live up in uh, Raven County, Georgia, and it was right real close to the Highlands. It, it, yeah, that's really nice. Aloha. Love your channel. Love you too, Raymond. I'm glad you're here. Urban Van Life. Thank you so much. Happy 60th birthday, Edward. <laughs> Time you learn to drive. Well, here's the thing. Eddie's younger than me. <laughs> Eddie hasn't even reached 50 yet. I'm a, I guess what, I, what they say. I'm a cougar. <laughs> Tinkerbell says I'm watching on my smart TV. Happy birthday, Eddie. Yeah. You know what? I've seen a lot more people watching the live streams on uh, your television. I know it's really, um, they don't give you the ability to like give it a thumbs up or whatever. So if anybody would do me a favor after this is over with, with and you're watching on television, if you wouldn't go on your mind going on your phone and give me a little thumbs up, that helps the YouTube algorithm so we can have these great discussions. If you guys ever want to talk about um, anything, it doesn't matter. It could be mobile homes. It could be about what's going on with private equity. Um, just go ahead and drop it in the chat and Eddie will put it up on the screen. Everybody's wishing Eddie a happy birthday. <laughs> Yep. He's the, he's the guy in the back who puts all these up on the screen so I can continue to talk to you. Cause if I, if I didn't have him, I'd be sitting there going like this the whole time and I can't see, you know, <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> Peter, uh, Peter has a question. It says, how hard is it to keep doing real estate show each week when there's basically no market to talk about? There's nothing has changed for a while now. I love talking about real estate. I mean, honest to God, I, I talk about it all the time. If somebody calls me and they happen to be a real estate agent, I will have them on the phone just spitting out facts. Because a lot of times, believe it or not, you'd be surprised how many people don't know what's going on in the real estate market and they're real estate agents as far as like what's going with private equity firms, what's going on with manufactured housing. They don't even know that the rules have changed when it comes to manufactured housing and that it's easier to get an FHA loan. Um, they've changed the, uh, the requirements for that. Um, you'd be surprised how many people are not in tune with real estate as much as someone like me that's constantly reading every single week. And then Eddie, my, Eddie, the producer in the background, he sends me articles that he gets across on his uh, channel, on his uh, news feed all the time, too. Um, you know, like if unless you're in it every single day, most people have no idea because they're living their ordinary lives, uh, have no idea what's going on with the housing market. Uh, congratulations on South Carolina women's hoops winning the NCAA champions 30 and 0 record. I, I wish I knew anything about sports, but I know it's been like, really exciting. <laughs> I hope those girls make a good amount of money and they're able to invest in real estate. That would be amazing. Um, I'm, I'm glad that uh, college girls, college guys, college kids can start making money uh, off of their name because so many other people did long before that. So, yeah. Oh, here we go. Iowa Hawkeyes. Great, Eddie. Eddie knows every time Eddie tries to talk to me about sports, I'm like, is this a sports thing? Because I have no interest, <laughs> none. Uh, Creative uh, Frugal has another question. I would love to learn more about uh, being a referral agent or maybe for EXP willing to talk privately. You can go ahead and email me. Um, go ahead and fill out a form on my website. Go to christinasmallhorn.com and then fill out a form. Just put it in the collaboration pink tab. Yep. Eddie's going to go ahead and put it on the screen. Yes, indeed. With my feet showing. My kids are always telling me to take that picture down because I'm showing my feet. <laughs> like nobody cares about a woman's over 50 feet. <laughs> they, nobody cares about my feet. <laughs> kids. All right. Any questions? Go ahead and put them up on the screen. I would really greatly appreciate it. We can talk about... Um, we can talk about anything real estate related. That's for sure. Um, I've noticed that uh, the federal government's been pushing for more manufactured housing and al uh, allowing for more areas to be rezoned for manufactured housing as well. You know why? Because they can get it built fast. And we're such in a deficit of homes in the United States that that's why I think they're they're pushing for it for so hard. 
Proud Liberal 24 says, is there still affordable markets like Iowa and parts of West Virginia, parts of Kansas, et cetera? People don't want to purchase in those areas. You can really find anything when you look hard enough. Um, you can't take everything that I say or anything that everybody says on YouTube channels as that is your specific market because every market is different. Um, in my market, if you asked me a year ago, could you find any deals? Nope, not really. But today you can. You can. The, the market here has loosened up where it's a lot more fair and sellers are willing to negotiate with buyers. Buyers are, are more wise and able to choose for more houses than they did in the past. We still do not have the same supply of homes like we did uh, before the pandemic, but it's getting back to normalcy, which is something a lot of agents are very thankful for. Um, it was tough to like, you know, like you go into these houses and then they have 30, 40 offers sitting in front of them. And you're just looking at the buyers like, I don't know how to tell you how to compete. It's like, it's they're like, I can't tell you to pay more than $30,000 over asking price for this house. It just, it's crazy to me, you know? But, you know, what's holding a lot of um, people from purchasing is uh, the interest rates. What's shocking to me is even though the amount of listings have gone up, how many homes are still sold as cash? How many cash buyers are actually out there? That's shocking to me. Shocking. Uh, I never had seen um, as much cash flow into the housing market like I did during the pandemic. And I was like, where are these people getting it from under their mattress? I mean, even I'm not talking about corporate investors. I'm talking like just regular people walking in. They're like, yeah, we're going to just buy a cash. I'm like, I didn't have that at 30. I didn't have $275,000 just cash just to buy a house. I it was shocking to me. Um, what I did find out uh, later, you know, a few, few months later is that a lot of people, what they were doing is like their grandparent or parent had that money um, cash, you know, to give to them so they could purchase the house after they purchased the house, they went ahead and got a mortgage. So that way they didn't have that bidding problem. Um, again, different different uh, economy for a lot of different people, that's for sure. Um, D.B. Douglas says, "Is uh, if estimated property value goes up, will the property taxes go up a bunch too? Some areas have levelized um insurance, how much, I mean, levelized taxes on how much it can go up per year or whatever. Um, but estimated value, if it goes up statistically, your, your, uh, taxes go up as well. That's for sure. Yep. And every area has a different rule. And then, Oh, and, Oh, this is a great tip. Anybody that's over the age of 65, I want you to check with your tax assessor's office to see if they have, um, something to help you with your tax, uh, your taxes. Even um, if you're a, a, a vet as well. So some areas will have benefits to people that have have aged, you know, like that are in that retirement age. They'll uh, level your taxes off and you don't have to pay more property taxes than what you pay it to this date. Or it can only go up 1% each year or something like that. Um, that is the same for veterans as well. So you know, check to see if there's any kind of benefit to you when it comes to your property taxes. Most people don't even check. And um, it it's very possible that you might have something in your specific area. So check it out. Make sure. What zone is manufactured housing? Uh, what zone is manufactured housing market? Is it a certain number uh, for the area? Is it a certain number for the area? What is this? Well, like, so what you're saying is like, whenever you have a usage for a piece of property, they'll have it zoned residential, but no manufactured homes. So they will they might have residential areas now that are being able to be zoned for manufactured homes. We have plenty of land here that says it's zoned for manufactured homes, but it has to be over one acre in order to put a manufactured home on it. And you can't put more than one on that one acre. So it has to be one acre if you're buying a brand new one. There's lots of older ones that are sitting on less or smaller lots. Um, but like I said, they're rezoning. So they might actually even change that as well. You, you're just going to have to check in your area. Yep. So it's still residential. You just have to look up, uh, is it zoned residential that allows for manufactured homes? 
in some areas too, they don't understand like they'll, they say all manufactured homes, even so that would include modular homes, even though modular homes are built to the sp same specifications as a traditional built home, <laughs> which like makes no sense. Sometimes you can work with the planning and zoning though, when you show them your, your, uh, your uh, building, um, what is it? Not the plat map. Uh, what is that thing called? Why am I brain farting right now? Oh, I have it in my brain. I have the picture. I can't even say it. <laughs> Anyways, when you show them your, the whole building plan that you have, uh, the, the architectural, um, oh, the word is just whatever. <laughs> when you have that, you can bring it to planning and zoning. And a lot of times when you show them what you're doing, even though it's considered manufactured, because it's modular, they will allow you to do it. You just have to bring it to them because in their brains, they think all manufactured homes are like the traditional mobile home, even though modular homes are built to uh, traditional home building, if not better. Thank you, blueprints. Holy cow. Why could I not think of that word? <laughs> like, oh, it's age. I'm going senile. That's what's happening. <laughs> so, thank you, blueprints. <sighs> Flatten survey, you need that for building, that's for sure. Alan, Mor Alan Morgan says, question, can you explain the new regulations concerning realtors for fees about buyer's agents? Does the seller still have to pay a buyer's agent? So yes, I can, I can give you a little rundown. This is a simplified version. Uh, there was a lawsuit that was put out there and the National Association of Realtors um, and a few larger brokerages were sued saying they were in collusion with each other to set the commission rate at 6%. Um, so they decided to settle that lawsuit. And now after July, if, if this is signed off by the judge, no longer will it be advertised in the MLS that the sellers are offering a buyer's compensation. So what will change is that if you're looking for buy, uh, buyer representation from a real estate agent, you can negotiate still with the seller. It doesn't mean you can't negotiate that the seller does pay a portion of the commissions for the buyer's agent or the buyer can go ahead and pay for it themselves. Um, but every seller that I've spoken to, every agent that I've spoken to says that um, even though it's no longer advertised in the MLS and we can't advertise it that way, most sellers, the majority of the sellers are looking to still be able to work with buyer's agents that come with buyers into the house and they know that they need to earn a commission for doing that job. And so they're still offering something for that buyer's agent. It's just that the paperwork will look different now. And whenever a real estate agent meets with a buyer that wants to take them through a house, you're going to have to sign an agreement saying that if you decide to purchase this house, you have to pay that agent. But that all can be negotiated in your contract. Um, it, the real estate industry has been changing for quite some time. Um, I don't think this is the death of real estate agents. I think it's just one of those things that has been changed once again, because this is exactly how real estate was done before the other change. I think it was in the eighties. It was a buyer beware situation. The real estate agent only represented the seller. They worked uh, uh, for the buyers, uh, not in their best interest. And they would write up these uh, houses and they would earn their commission from the sellers. Now it's not done that way. So it's again, gonna be a buyer beware situation. And uh, that's how it's going to be working. <laughs> you know, I it'll be interesting how every nobody has a, again a crystal ball on how this is going to change. Um, real estate will still get sold uh, with real estate agents. How that will look in the future, uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, I think that this is one of those things like the pendulum swung this way, and the reason why um, it swung so far is because of the fact that people saw a number on the bottom line of how much was sellers having to pay out to real estate agents. But most sellers at some point need to buy something. So that pendulum would have swung the other way because those commissions were paid by the next seller. Um, that's like, that's pretty much how it balanced out. But um, I don't think this is the death of the real estate agent. That's for sure. Uh, like some people were saying, um, I just think it's just going to look a lot different, just a lot more paperwork is all. 
Rogue Mountain says, question, where in Rabin County did you guys live? I was in uh, Tulua, Georgia State Park today. Um, okay. The Gorge. Yes. So I, years ago, this was like, we're going to, we're going to time travel back in two, not even 2000. It was 1992, 1993. I rented a manufactured home, mobile home. Um, uh, on the mountain. I can't even remember the name of that road, but it took me 45 minutes to go up that stupid road. I used to uh, go down to the Big Lee and do my grocery shopping. <laughs> and I that's where I, I lived there. That's where I went to school. I went to North Georgia Tech. <laughs> that's where I went to school, North Georgia Tech. Um, I, that was not my favorite town, I have to tell you, but I, I wasn't from there. You know, there was a lot of people that went to the same school that I did. Um, yeah. Not the highlight of my life. Bad boyfriend. <laughs> Very bad boyfriend. Um, Sim girl won with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much. My mom wants to sell her home to me, but she's currently paying down the property tax lien. So I would be taking over that over along with the paying the discounted price. Should we be able to, how should we be able to handle this transaction? I would tell you to go ahead and meet with a title attorney. And I'm, I'm, are, if you're buying this cash, yeah, just go straight to the title attorney to clear this all up because he's going to have to um, work with the lien and pay that off in order for it to, the proceeds would pay off that lien before it could be transferred into your name. That's how it works in Louisiana. It could be different in your state. So, uh, but if you're getting a uh, mortgage, you're going to have to meet, work with the mortgage company and you're going to have to work with the title attorney. So we, you can clear that up before you're able to take over basically the payments, um, with a new mortgage. Brian Reed said, I just checked in the VA, uh, construction loan and it said it was at 3.2 per 3.25%. Is that possible? I am not a mortgage broker. I, I do not know what the VA construction loan has going on right now. I, I wrong person to ask, uh, you know who I, we should ask when the house you love Kyle Seagraves, he would know. Uh, maybe, you know what, I'm going to see if I can get them on next week and we can, um, we can revisit this question. I'm sorry, Brian, I don't have a better, a better answer for you. I suck. <laughs> oh, look, another one, Brian. <laughs> People can't see uh, the fees in the MLS anyway. Yes, they can. It's, it's, it literally had to be posted. It, like, it's a law that said that they actually had to be posted in the MLS. Uh, it had to be like, it was a big thing that we had to show because of the, um, who, who got us for that? It was, um, was it the FCC. One of them said that you had to disclose how much uh, compensation was out there. We had to write it on listings. Yep, we did. And now you don't have to, now it's all secret again. N nobody knows how much money's getting passed across the table. That's, uh, I don't know. It doesn't feel right to me. There has to be disclosure. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's what I think. Question. It feels like, like a chess game with the housing issues and we're losing. My sister-in-law is forced to move out of her park from the new owners that raise the rent. When will it stop? I have a very deep empathy for people that have lived and are living in, in manufactured home parks. The law has not caught up to what has been happening. There is almost in every single state, there is no protections for people that live in manufactured home parks. None, zero, zilch. Those investors can do pretty much whatever they want to the people in that area. The only way to to like ruffle the feathers and get people talking about it and the public to know how incredibly disgusting and insidious this is, is to contact your local news. They don't like that kind of uh, pressure and they don't like that kind of exposure. Um, they, they, I've seen a lot more news uh, outlets talking about it. And when that happens, politicians want to get elected. And so they're more willing to do something instead of nothing. Um, it's always a slow moving process. And in order to get 
the squeaky wheel oiled, you have to get really loud and very squeaky and show how disgusting this practice is. That's the only way to do it. Um, I, I, you try to be nice no matter what the situation is and it will get you nowhere the more you're obnoxious you are and the more loud you are and the more you cause a stink then all of a sudden they'll do something to get you to pipe down and that's what i'd tell you to do reach out to your local news be loud obnoxious do it uh bliss bliss says do you think people are waiting till uh off the nars decision in july could be it could be um, but, you know, interest rates at 7% is not going to get a lot of people uh, motivated, especially when they're first time home buyers. They're waiting because a lot of experts at the end of 2023 said that they were likely going to see um, interest rates hit the low sixes, maybe even high five. So a lot of people sat on the fence and they're like, well, I'm not going to do that until I see the high low uh, sixes, high fives. And a lot of sellers said, I'm not selling until I see that too, because my interest rate is at like 3%. I'm not going to give up my house until to move into another house to have a payment that's way off base from what I'm paying now. So, um, you know, it could be, it, it could be that that, you know, commission would make the big biggest difference for them to move. It's possible. We'll see. We'll see what happens after July. If that's the case, if that's the reason, if you think home prices are going to decline because they don't have to pay real estate commissions, that's not the case. That is not the case. Real estate, uh, let's just say a house uh, before July was was valued at, comp said it was $250,000. After July, that house with the comps is still $250,000. And that pace, that price is still there. And those sellers are still going to say, my house is worth $250,000. They're not, they're not going to be as um, willing to give up that cost. Um, I don't see the home prices going down because of that. Uh, all right. MH08 says, is it something you have to worry about? It's the something you have to worry about. Yeah, it's the something you have to worry about. I always say they. It's the they the knowers of all the 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 planners of the plan those are the ones you have to worry about it's a uh, i think the last 3 years has enlightened a lot of people on um the amount of corruption in so many different sectors you know with housing with real estate with um with government with uh social media sites with food costs what we even consume the the food industry uh banking uh it's always something, isn't it? You know, I, I hope everybody's going to go. How many people are going to go watch the uh, the eclipse? I'm not doing that. I'm going to stay home. <laughs> you all know uh, federal laws on the books that since the beginning of our country against monopolies. Yeah. Tell that to <laughs> investors. These investors are committing antitrust monopolies in broad daylight and in walking in the rain, laughing about it. Who's going to who's supposed to stop them? Who's supposed to stop these? these monopolies from happening. Government is, right? But who's paying for the campaigns for the government to run? These monopolies. Yep. Yep. The Sherman Act makes it unlawful for any person to monopolize or attempt to monopolize uh, or combine or, or conspire with any other person or persons to monopolize any part of the trade or commerce among several states or foreign nations. Yeah, it's a law, but who's going to stop them? You know, who's going to stop them? Like every time uh, election, uh, election officials have to vote on a raise for themselves, do you think they ever deny themselves a raise? Absolutely not. <laughs> even when they haven't even shown up for the job, they do it. <laughs> time to break out the tinfoil hat. I actually have one. You guys want to see it? I actually made this tinfoil hat. My, my favorite, yeah. My favorite conspiracy theory right now. If if you or if you guys are ready, if you want to hear my my top my top ten conspiracy theory hat, is we a couple of weeks ago we were talking about squatters, and I I. Like when I was talking about squatters, I started thinking about it on the fact that 
it seems to be the squatting problem um, needs is in the areas that institutional investors want to buy as many properties as possible. And the people that are have access to these properties have to be some kids with an Instagram account that get as many people in those homes as, as they can. And I think if we peel back enough layers, I bet you the list of those houses that are are being offered up to squatters is coming from institutional investors. And the reason I say that is, imagine you have a house that's been vacant. It was your mom's well taken care of. Squatter has come in there. You've tried to get rid of them. You can't get rid of them over and over again. And then an institutional investor says, hey, look, I know this guy has taken over your house and it's absolute mess. And you're the, you've already spent thousands of dollars on court fees. Why don't I go ahead and take this property off of your hands? Um, of course, at a very discounted price, because, you know, it's going to cost us to get rid of that person, that squatter out of your home, but we'll take it off your hands and you don't have the headache anymore. You may think that's a lot of different steps to get more housing, but I, I think they're, they're sneaky enough to do it. I think, I think that they look at this as the long haul, own as much as we can for as little as we can, no matter how we can do it. That's what I think. That's my tinfoil hat theory. <laughs> yep. <laughs> On the clips line, uh, I'll walk outside. Yeah, I mean, we don't, here in Louisiana, we're not going to get much of an eclipse. I'm going to do the little thing, you know, the little, the papers like you did in elementary school. I'm going to do it. Everybody's freaking out. There's a bunch of people that think that some world event is going to happen during the eclipse. Um, I'm I'm over 50. I don't know how many times that an eclipse has happened where people freaked out um, and they thought, you know, the world was going to collapse because of a clip a eclipse. Sure enough, next day it happens. Everybody wakes up again. So uh, everybody can mark themselves safe after the eclipse. <laughs> so, well, won't they always cite uh, takings clause? All right. Also known as a takings clause, it states, nor shall private property be taken from public use without just compensation. The provision does not prohibit the United States from acquiring property from private owners, but rather conditions such as taking on the payment of com just compensation. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know that clause. Um, that is that a new clause to me, I'm not an attorney. I just know it from a real estate aspect. And um, I've talked to a bunch of real estate agents in different areas on how they're going to handle the compensation because um, sellers still want buyers to come to their house, right? Um, listing agents, a lot of them are just, they just list the house. You know, they, they do all the marketing plan. And, you know, the, the reason they put in the MLS is for the buyer's agents to come in that from their marketing that brought in the buyers. Um, so a, a lot of them are coming up with other ways to market that they're offering a compensation to the buyer's agent, even though it can't be listed in the MLS. Every MLS is handing this a little bit different. Some of them are putting signs that say like buyer's agent welcome or um, a buyer's compensate. Not They can't say compensation, but they'll say, uh, yeah, buyer's agent welcome pretty much just letting them know that, you know, they're, they are offering compensation because they still want those buyers to come into the house, you know, and those agents have cultivated a clientele um, that, you know, they can call to see and look at those houses and maybe write up an offer. Um, we'll see what, how it goes. It'll be really interesting. <laughs> I love the hat with the spooky music. That was Eddie, Eddie, the producer came up with the music, but I made the hat. I made it. I made it from, I made this. <laughs> Hi from California. Love you. I love you too. Yeah, I, I have. I, I like my little tinfoil hat. Look how the camera adjusts, man. It made me all bright. I It's an old ball cap, by the way, if you want to know. It's an old ball cap and I wrapped it in tinfoil. I, I, when I got done, I thought, oh my gosh, I kind of, I think I made it a little too big. I didn't adjust it quite right, but I, it forms to my brain enough if I squeeze the tinfoil <laughs> there. Yeah, no, it's an old ball cap that I ripped up. <laughs> I took the bill off of it and wrapped it in tinfoil. Everybody needs a tinfoil hat because everybody is sitting on a conspiracy theory. If you have a really good conspiracy theory about real estate, put it in the chat and I'll read it up on the screen. That'd be amazing. <laughs> That'd be amazing. 
by the way, at, like at the top of the hour, we were talking about young men um, causing home prices to decline, according to Meredith Whitney, the Oracle of, of Wall Street, deemed by Bloomberg that named her that. I don't think, I, I honestly don't think it's because young men aren't buying houses that are going to cause home price declines. I think there's going to be some kind of in, other economic factor that brings in um, home price declines. Uh, it can't go up forever because most people, a good portion, and they're, now they're talking about, like we've been talking about this forever, but a good portion of the United States that makes the median income in their area can't afford the median home in that area. And that is a huge economic shift from decades back. Yep. Carl Holmes says, Christina Smallhorn, do you think the, cr uh, the crash, if it materialized, will occur in the UK, in the EU? Well, you know what is so strange, Carl? is that our housing problems here in the United States are not unique to the United States. Um, if you like look at Canada, the UK, Australia, they're all seeing the same identical thing. I mean, almost a mirror image of each other of what's going on there is happening uh, here. It is, uh, if there is an economic shift here, I, uh, when it comes to housing prices, it, I, it, I would be shocked if it didn't happen in those same countries that are having the same identical housing market we do. Um, I, I just, I can't see it. I can't see it. If it, do, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yep. Juicy Fruit says, Christina, have you heard of the about foreclosure list scams? They have discovered some loopholes in auction process that have allowed these entities to purchase foreclosed homes for a hundred dollars. There's always um there's always like tax uh you can buy houses, foreclosed properties through tax sales. That's very common. Um you have to check the title. If you if you see a auction site that has homes that's for sale. They have to put the address up first. Um, I would immediately have a title company in your pocket that can look up the title work for that specific home. Um, they'll be able to tell you pretty quickly if it has a bunch of liens on it, um, who owns it, if it's actually in foreclosure. When it comes to real estate sch schemes and scams, there's a, always a ton of them. Um, the tiny home business right now is littered with them. It's so poisonous and terrible. Um, again, with the Instagram fake pictures telling people they're building these houses when they steal them from other websites, get people's deposits, then they shut down that Instagram account and start another one, basically doing the same thing. Um, there's wiring fraud in real estate. Anything that can make a scammer money, they're going to figure out a way. Um, just You always have to be careful. And if you're ever worried about any kind of property, get in close contact with a title attorney and they can look up a lot of information. It's kind of like looking up a car fax. That title work is going to have all that information that you need to know about it. I mean, it's not going to tell you about the structure of it, but it's going to tell you about any kind of liens and who owns it and how many mortgages out there are on it. Yep. Uh, thanks, Christine. It's hard to fathom if prices will ever come down. If the Fed prints a bunch of trillions, which is uh, what it will take this time. Our currency strength will plummet and we'll, and we'll be in for, yeah. Well, and that's that's very true. You know, like um, <laughs> I, I didn't, I remember being young going, I don't want to know anything that goes on in the government. I just want to get my paycheck and, you know, I don't care. I don't care what go, I don't want to know about politics. And then things got, as I got older, I was like, okay, well, I'm more interested in the politics of housing. Um, and it, and then as I got older again, I didn't realize how everything, no matter what sector you're in, they're all tied together. Housing is tied to food. It's tied to uh, medical. It's Everything is tied to one another. So um, unless we get a handle of how corporations have pretty much destroyed it the economy for the normal regular person. Uh, we're going to see, I just, I want some change. That's all I can say because we haven't seen it. Mm -mm -mm, not for years. That's for sure. Tinkerbell conspiracy. All politicians on both sides are the same. They all sold out. 
And this will continue until they decide to crash the economy. I don't know if that's a conspiracy, though. <laughs> I think you're speaking truth. Uh, I mean, I, I think all politicians, no matter what side, say what they need to say to get elected. That's that's what I think. Um, they all have their ways of getting elected. And it always seems, always seems that whenever they do get elected, things change. You know, things really do change. There's a guy who wrote up a policy that made everybody go, oh, he's for the little guy. You know, he wrote up a bill that's sitting in Congress right now, uh, still not even ever going to see the light of day. That was basically um, that he was going to stop corporate investing. And so he wrote this long bill. He had a bunch of other people that were co-signing it. And they were, you know, we had, uh, you know, both people on both sides of the aisle that were signing off on this, you know, we have bipartisanship. Fantastic. The thing is, is that bill is written and it will do absolutely nothing, even if they all voted on it unanimously, because the way it was written, it was saying that hedge funds buying properties, hedge funds don't buy properties, <laughs> private equity does. So, you know, like it did nothing, but it sure did make his campaign look good. Sure did. You know, like he really did, did something there. <laughs> So question, don't the same people who own real estate in the U.S. own uh, all over the world? This is true. They do. Yep. The only like if the billionaires hurt in some way, shape or form, right, if they're really hurting and they start dumping a bunch of their properties. They'll 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 do something to uh, crash the economy so everybody can hurt as much as they do. Mm -hmm. They're babies. <laughs> <laughs> They're little babies, really rich little babies. Why don't people understand insurance rates and loans are based on a zip code called risk? Of course they know that. Of course they do. That's why when you get a house, well, any real estate agent worth their uh, salt would tell you that, you know, we got to look up the insurance for this specific area. Here in Louisiana, you before you even show the house, you're looking up the flood zone and you're calling the other agent to ask for the flood certificate and how much they're asking for flood insurance on that piece of property. Um, yeah, like that is that is a very common question when when looking at real estate is how much is the the insurance and how much is the property taxes on this piece of property? Uh, insurance, especially right now, um, has gotten so outrageous in a lot of areas like Florida being one of them, Louisiana, Texas, anywhere along the Gulf Coast, California. Um, some areas have, had doubled from the year before. So yeah, that's a top, that's a top question is how much is the insurance? That's what most home buyers are asking besides the price. How much is the insurance for this house? Um, it's pretty common. Not, it didn't used to be as common as it is today because insurance has gone up so high. So everybody, I want to say thank you to our moderators today. And if you have a really good conspiracy theory that you want to, uh, well, you want to uh, share with me that I didn't talk about here on the um, on the podcast or the live stream here, just put it after this is posted. After this is posted, you can put it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your conspiracy theories. I might even make a video about it. You know, the top real estate conspiracy theories from our from the viewers. That'd be really interesting. It might be a really fun fun video to make. So, um, BD says all pol politicians are not definitely the same. No way. But they do all want uh, to get elected. It's up to us to demand policies that will help us. Yep, it's true. It's true. Like I said, squeaky wheel. You got to get loud. Got to get obnoxious in order for things to get done. The more more obnoxious you are, sure enough, that happens. So, all right, everybody, if you need me and you want to contact me, you can go to my website, christinasmallhorn.com. Just hit on one of the pink links and I will connect with you as soon as I can. Please be safe. Do not look up during the eclipse. Like, please don't do that. Yep. I just don't want you to do that. If you're wanting to listen to this or share this as a podcast, you can go to anywhere you get your podcast. Just go Christina Smallhorn, Real Estate for Everyone. Share the podcast with your friends and family. If you happen to be on there, make sure you give it a little five-star rating. I really appreciate that. That really does help send it out to new people. All right, everybody, if there's anything you want to talk about next week, let me know. I will give it a whirl. Matter of fact, this article came from a subscriber, by the way. <laughs> I forgot to mention that at the beginning. All that talking, I never even thanked the subscriber. Thank you. All right, Long. Farewell. Oh, Eddie's got some. Are we going to do rock and roll? Let's put some rock and roll conspiracy hat stuff on. My little antenna goes around. <laughs> <laughs>